I am not in the room with a calculator or spreadsheet. My role is about being comfortable with numbers, not being afraid of them when they are part of a bigger story. My name is Mudi and I'm an actuary. Actuaries use mathematics, business skills and economics to help companies manage risk. Imagine, for example, lending somebody money. There's a risk that in lending that person money that you don't get it back. Part of what actuaries do is to help companies measure that risk. I work in life insurance at the Bank of England and part of my job is to try to get a bit of a sense of what the world might look like 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50 years from now. Let's say somebody wanted to take out life insurance. As an actuary, we will need to price it. And in doing that, we would have to look at a whole range of factors, their age, where they live, whether they smoke. We put all that information together to come up with probabilities of when you may pass away in order to calculate your monthly payment. Actuaries mainly work in insurance, but the world is changing. Companies now have access to so much data that they need people with the skills to be able to handle it in order to make good business decisions. It's really helpful to be inquisitive and to not be afraid to speak up. If something doesn't make sense to you, it probably doesn't make sense. When you study maths at school, there's usually only one right answer. In real life, it's often not like that. You may have different solutions based on different views people have. What really matters isn't the number, it's how you've gotten there and how you're able to justify it. I first heard of the job of an actuary in secondary school, but it wasn't really until I was in university that I decided that I wanted to be an actuary. I didn't know anybody who was an actuary, but I thought to myself, what do I enjoy? I enjoy economics, I enjoy business, I enjoy probability, I enjoy statistics. It's really important to do the things that you enjoy. I discovered that I was good at chess in year five and joined the school team. To be half decent at chess, you have to be able to think ahead and think about different scenarios. What might happen if the player plays one move? How might you react? You have to think three, four, five moves ahead. This is just like what I do in my job now. I was really into football when I was younger. I wanted to be pro. Football taught me about being committed to my craft, about being consistent. Consistency beats ability. Learning that you had to put training in to be good at the game was a useful lesson for studying too. Doing calculations might seem boring, but it can be really helpful in helping giving you a feel for the numbers. I wasn't playing for a big football club by a certain age, and my dream of making it professional died. I really wanted to be successful and to really enjoy what I did as a career. And by studying hard, and achieving the best grades gave me the best chance to do that. For my A-levels, I did maths, economics and psychology. I wasn't originally going to do maths until I had a conversation with my brother who said, trust me, doing maths will keep your doors open. And he was right. I really enjoyed maths at GCSE but I found the jump between GCSE and A-levels quite challenging. I realised that as you go up, there's less hand-holding. At university, I really had to put the time in and stop messing around. Consistency is really important. Try to develop the habits that will help you as you go through school, like reading your notes after class. If there's something that you don't understand, ask for help, don't wait. My biggest role model is my mother. I'm the youngest of five. She came to England with her kids all by herself and had to find her feet. It must have been so hard and the resilience she showed was inspiring. She wanted to give me and my siblings an opportunity. It would be a disservice if I didn't take that on and pass it on to my kids.